Accused of domestic terrorism, State Representative Matt Shea now being asked to resign. Tonight, our political reporter is digging into the report. High elevation snow, rain and wind continue through the Inland Northwest on Friday. The final Democratic presidential primary debate of the year wrapped up tonight. The impeachment vote was a hot topic among the seven candidates. We begin tonight with some major political news. The independent investigation into State Representative Matt Shea has been released. As a result, House Republicans kicked Shea out of their caucus. Good evening. Thanks so much for staying up late with us tonight. I'm Tim Pham. Our political reporter Casey Decker joins us live now in studio. Casey, what did investigators find out? Well, clearly, if his own party wants him gone, the report must be pretty inflammatory, and it is. At one point, it says Shea participated in an act of domestic terrorism, a result of his involvement with the Malheur standoff in 2016. The investigation was launched by the Washington State House looking to determine whether Shea has ever committed political violence. The investigators, the Rampart Group, a private firm led by former law enforcement. After four months of work, here were some of their key findings. First, they found his trip to Bunkerville, Nevada was to support armed militia members in their standoff with the government there, not fact-finding as he had claimed. Second, that he played a key role in organizing another standoff in Priest River. Third, that he helped plan, in advance, the Malheur standoff. That one eventually resulted in a person's death, and the report says Shea authored and circulated a military-style operations plan for it. It also says Shea met with law enforcement telling them he was a state rep, but omitting his ties to the militia, in order to gain intelligence he could use to help that militia. Other findings include that Shea used intimidation tactics against a political opponent and has condoned violence and intimidation against political opponents. Also, that he helped train youth to fight a holy war and encouraged one in his writing. Not long after the report came out, Shea's fellow Republicans took action. They suspended him from the caucus, meaning he cannot use party staff or attend party meetings. His office will be moved and he's lost all his committee seats. Minority Leader J.T. Wilcox said in a statement, quote, allegations this serious, many supported by his own communications and associates, justify this immediate action. He also called on Shea to resign. Governor Jay Inslee also responding saying on Twitter, quote, There is no place in Washington for hate or violence. This report is disturbing, and these actions should be unacceptable to Washingtonians of all political parties. The report has been forwarded to the U.S. Attorney and the FBI. Spokane County Sheriff Ozzy Knezovich, a longtime Shea critic, saying those offices should pursue Shea for domestic terrorism. Matt Shea needs to be held accountable, and Matt Shea needs to be uh, prosecuted. Uh, this man's actions, if not... Uh, treason. Um, they bordered on treason. Shea, on his part, posted a statement on Facebook, reading in part, quote, This is a sham investigation meant to silence those of us who would stand up against attempts to disarm and destroy our great country. I will not back down. I will not give in. I will not resign. Shea had multiple chances to speak with investigators who say he declined all of them. Now, although he removed from the caucus, he isn't removed from the actual House. He can still vote and propose legislation. It would take a two-thirds vote of all members to kick him out entirely, something that's only happened once in the state's history. It was for a convicted rapist in the 1930s. Still, Shea's power will be severely limited. It will be nearly impossible for him to get any bills, even considered, let alone passed, by committees. But for those who want him gone for good, the simplest course might just be beating him in the 2020 election in Spokane Valley. Tim. All right, Casey, thank you. New tonight, after a six-year-long investigation, an ethics panel found that Representative Kathy McMorris Rogers misused thousands of dollars of taxpayer money for her campaign. And in the new report, the House Ethics Committee is ordering for McMorris Rogers to pay back more than $7,500 to the U.S. Treasury. A spokesperson for the Congresswoman issued a statement saying in part, quote, We are pleased that the committee has ended its review and we can finally put this matter behind us. This matter began after a disgruntled former employee raised complaints against the Congresswoman regarding forced campaign activity. Back in 2013, a report found that McMorris Rogers and her staff ignored ignored laws relating to the use of official and unofficial resources. 
Well, much of that snow that caused slick conditions this morning has melted and it's causing really a slushy mess now. But the good news is Michelle Boss says it's not going to refreeze overnight. Michelle. Yeah, take a look at some of the temperatures across the inland northwest. Normally you think, oh, as we get into the overnight hours, we're going to see those temperatures fall back below freezing. That is not the case for tonight. We have some very warm air pushing into the area and it's more likely we're going to see temperatures continue to go up during the overnight hours. And we're already sitting in the upper 30s in Spokane, Coeur d'Alene at 37 in the mid 40s in Ritzville and uh, even across the Palouse, Pullman, Lewiston. Uh, they're in the 40s right now to a couple of spots where the cold air is kind of holding fast. Moses Lake still at the freezing mark. Wenatchee 29. They're going to see continued accumulation of snow because of that uh, cold air out there. And Sandpoint sitting at 32, but the warm air is eventually going to make it into those regions as well. So for the places that are still holding on to some cold air, they can see some additional snow accumulation generally across the mountains. Of course, the higher elevations in north central and northeastern Washington and the northern panhandle generally amount under four inches, but in those mountains and especially across uh, even the valleys in the Metau Valley where that cold air is really trapped, they're going to see some more significant accumulations through tomorrow. So a couple of winter storm warnings still in effect through tomorrow morning and winter weather advisories across the central panhandle. And then we'll start to see that warm air move in and a lot more snow change over to rain. So we're still seeing lots of wet weather right now on radar. Here's a look at the next three days. 47 tomorrow. Wind is going to be a big factor. Gust over 40 miles an hour. Rain showers and mild still on Saturday. And even as we get closer to Christmas, on Sunday, maybe a few lingering rain showers, but a high in the 40s. Michelle, thank you. Well, we do want to pass a quick note to you. The Kettle Falls School District will have a two hour delay tomorrow. They tell us this is due to weather and snow and unsafe travel conditions. So be sure to head on over to creme.com and the creme 2 app for more updates on closures and delays. Also, be sure to tune in to up with creme tomorrow morning beginning at 5 a.m. Meanwhile, AAA expects this Christmas will be the busiest travel holiday ever. The agency predicts more than 115 million people will travel between this Saturday and January 1st. This is a live look at Interstate 90. Right now, roads just look wet as the snow has mostly turned to rain. Seven candidates took the stage in Los Angeles tonight for the last Democratic presidential primary debate of the year. The event comes just a day after the House voted to impeach President Trump. Danya Bacchus reports. Not growing as much as in the sixth and smallest debate yet. We need to restore the integrity of the presidency, of the office of the presidency. Democrats vying to unseat President Trump immediately weighed in on his historic impeachment. If the president claims uh, that he is so innocent, then why doesn't he have all the president's men testify? The 2020 presidential candidates spent much of their time trying to set themselves apart. Billionaires in wine caves should not pick the next president of the United States. I am the, literally the only person on this stage who's not a millionaire or a billionaire. Other issues on the minds of voters like climate change also dominated the night. If we are going to treat climate as the threat that it is, we are going to have to partner with the Chinese. We have got to, and I've introduced legislation to do this, declare a national emergency. The Democratic debate took place here in California, a state that offers the biggest prize in the battle for delegates on Super Tuesday in March. Are you willing to commit tonight to running for a second term if you're elected next November? No, I'm not willing to commit one way or another. Here's the deal. I'm not even elected one term yet, and let's see where we are. Despite a historically diverse field, Thursday night's event featured only two women and one candidate of color. It's both an honor and disappointment to be the lone candidate of color on the stage tonight. I miss Kamala, I miss Corey, though I think Corey will be back. The first nominating contest of the 2020 primary season, the Iowa caucuses, is less than two months away. Donya back is CBS News, Los Angeles. Well, again, it's been 24 hours now since the House impeached President Trump. He's now the third U.S. president in history to be impeached. But now the focus is on the Senate. Senators will hold a trial to decide if the president will be removed from office. But it's an unlikely scenario, given that the vote will go to a Republican-controlled Senate. Democratic and Republican senators differ on how the trial should be conducted. Republicans want it to be quick, while Democrats want more witnesses and testimony. The Senate must put this right. We must rise to the occasion. McConnell has ranted and raved, but he hasn't had a single direct answer why there shouldn't be witnesses. So what's next? First, the Senate must get the two articles of impeachment from the House. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi has not made clear when that will happen.
The next thing for us will be when we see uh, the process that is set forth in the Senate, uh, then we'll know the number of managers that we may have to go forward. The Senate trial was expected to start in early January, but the timeline may not be clear until the House delivers the articles. Well, the impeachment inquiry is drawing a lot of attention on social media, including from WSU's head football coach. It's been well documented that Mike Leach is close friends with Donald Trump. Leach also endorsed Trump in the 2016 election. Today, WSU's head football coach was asked what he thought of Trump's impeachment. Here's what he had to say. Uh, I've, I haven't followed it too closely, but, uh, you know, it's clearly political. I mean, that doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure that out. And I'm yet to hear what uh, what he did wrong. So, you know, I mean, uh, you got to have a crime, I would think. So you, you, know, you don't think he'll be impeached? I, I was well, that the, that's a foregone conclusion. He won't be. All right, go ahead. So for more information on impeachment next steps and answers to your top impeachment questions, head to creme.com or the creme2 app. Well, a non-alcoholic bar is helping people fight alcohol addiction this holiday season, and they're proving why being sober this year can serve its health benefits. We'll explain next.